Hello Scorpio and welcome to your September reading. Let's go ahead and get started here with an oracle card. What is it that Scorpio needs to know for September? Okay, we have breathe. You know, this feels like a reminder to relax. This is going to be a pretty intense Virgo season, I'm not going to lie, okay? A pretty intense September. There's just a lot happening. And as much as I would like to wax poetic about how beautiful Virgo season can be, I just, I really think there's a lot going on, okay? We've got Pluto re-entering Capricorn. We have Uranus station, stationing retrograde. We're building up to eclipse season on the 17th of September. Um, we have Mercury moving direct again and going back through Virgo again. So, you know, there's just a lot of, we also have Venus, by the way, coming into Libra, which is going to cause a lot of adjustments. So, I mean, it's, it's important for us to stay flexible. It's important for us to stay adaptable and to be able to handle these kinds of moments with dignity, right? So just breathe. We don't need to be very reactive, even though there might be a tendency to be reactive, to take a step back, consider the options, consider what's happening, think about what's happening, and make choices and make decisions from a calm, cool, collected type of place. If you are facing a choice point and you have to go either left or right, and you're not sure, make sure that you take a moment to pause and do a period of consideration before you pull the trigger with anything. Um, we don't want to be making frenzied decisions. We would rather make decisions from a still mind, okay? We have, what's the niggling feeling trying to tell you? So there's something really intuitive coming online for you, Scorpio. So the breathing can also help you tune into that as well. Because if we're in this reactive place, and chances are we're going to want to be reactive. Chances are an event will occur, someone will say something, a change of plans will happen, and we're going to want to just boom, jump right on it right away. But honestly, I think if we take that, that moment, take that beat that we need to, to tune into that niggling feeling, we're gonna be in a much, much better scenario. And you'll be happier with your choices. You'll be happier with the outcome. You'll be happier with the process. And I think you'll be more fulfilled by the process as well, okay? All right, let's go ahead and tap into the tarot cards and see what they have to say. This just feels like these two cards alone feels like a reminder. It's like, don't forget to just listen to yourself. So we have the chariot, we have the two of wands, and we have the six of wands. Well, first of all, the chariot card signifies a deal of effort, okay? There, there's an element of transcendence where we have the option, and it is an option, it is rooted in choices and free will, we have the option to transcend certain circumstances in our lives. Now, for months, actually all year long, I have been talking about this Pluto dipping back into Capricorn. And during this time, September, October, and a big chunk of November, that there are going to be opportunities for us to revisit our past or to have things coming back or to have things that remind us of things from our past to resurface or to resurrect themselves specifically so that we can choose different choices than we chose in the past, you know, so that we can carve an entirely new path so that we can never go back there ever again. And it doesn't mean that everything's going to be awful or bad. It's just having a higher level of self-awareness when you're dealing with the same types of issues that you dealt with in the past, it's going to change your perspective on things and it's going to guide you in new and better ways and it's going to enhance the opportunity for growth and prosperity in your life. But, you know, there is work involved here and there has to be a significant level of self-awareness. If you are reactive and acting out of agitation or acting simply because the universe is nudging you or trying to like elbow you, trying to get a response from you, you're probably not going to be making the ultimate, the ultimate best decisions for you. 
Okay, so with the two of wands, it's really important to keep that vision in mind. And when you think of your life and you think of what you want your life to look like in the long term, like 80 years old, 90 years old, like how do you see it for the next 50 years or however old you are? I don't know how old you are, but uh, for the next whatever amount of years, what would, it be, what would be the decision that you would need to make right now in order to make that more likely? to make that a possibility. I do think maybe Scorpio right now, you are thinking a lot about your money. I think you're thinking a lot about your lifestyle. Maybe you're thinking about your retirement as well. You're thinking about your income streams. You're thinking about your relationships. You're thinking about your family and the things that you value the most. And how can you take those top priorities and enhance them? How can you make them better? How can you make these better decisions? And with the six of wands, it tells me that you are going to be successful in these efforts. I'm seeing a lot of victory with the chariot and the six of wands. So I'm not seeing you backtrack, which is a good thing because I think a lot of people will, especially people who are not attuned to themselves. Now, I'm not saying you have to be into tarot and astrology to do this. I think it's more about just a self attunement. If you're not attuned, if you're completely self-abandoned, right? This is gonna be a really hard couple of months. But if you are aware and able to have difficult conversations with yourself, you are going to supersede your own expectations. And I think there's gonna be a lot of healing in this process too, because you kind of get a do-over. You get that opportunity to be in that same place, but this time you get to say different things, you get to do different things, you get to act and behave in a different kind of way and in a way that maintains that high degree of self-respect. And I think with the chariot card, self-respect is really, really, really important. And I saw that significantly with the Libra reading as well, how important self-respect is and that we're not, and the reason why I say Libra, because many of you are like Vedic Libras, okay? So that Libra energy really ties in. And, you know, the self-respect theme is coming in strong for both of you. So um, don't forget to breathe. <laughs> don't forget to, to check in with yourself when this stuff happens because you get to completely rewrite the script at this point, okay? And you get to come at this from a much more empowered place, from a higher degree of understanding and from a more holistic place, because chances are in the past, when you were dealing with said circumstances, you weren't as aware, okay? You weren't as aware, you weren't as maybe mature, you weren't as deeply rooted within yourself or whatever the case may be. So you get to make better decisions this time. King of Cups. Six of Cups. Okay. The Six of Cups is feeling kind of funny to me. Um, now, normally the Six of Cups is kind of like a nice, sweet card where there's like maybe a, an essence of past connection, past lives, if you believe in that type of thing. Sometimes there's an element of gift giving that comes through with the Six of Cups as well. Uh, but for me this month, it, I'm, I'm feeling skepticism coming from Scorpio. I'm feeling skepticism. I'm feeling that you are skeptical of what people are trying to give you, or you're skeptical of that feeling, uh, that comfortable feeling. I look at the King of Cups, he kind of has his back turned to the Six of Cups. And then the Ace of Swords on the other side is really applying a great deal of logic and intellect to this. So while there might be something that's warm and fuzzy feeling, I think you're going to be like, I don't know that I trust this. And I think in typical Scorpio skeptical fashion, you're going to use that as a like, it's not that you don't trust anyone and everything. It's just that something isn't sitting right and right trust that niggling feeling something's not sitting right it's just something's a little bit off and that's probably 
when you're going to need to check in with yourself. That's when you're going to need to breathe because if something's not feeling off and yet, or something is feeling off and you react and you act reactively, you might get yourself into a little bit of a mess. And we have to be careful, Scorpio, you have to be careful because with Jupiter in the eighth house right now in Gemini, it's really, it's possible because with the eighth house, we get buried under stuff here. There can be a lot of like, sometimes it could be maybe like debt. It could be getting buried under the consequences of other people's choices a lot of times, right? So you have to be really careful about what you entangle yourself with. Who are you getting involved with? How are your business transactions? How are your emotional transactions? I think you, you are, I think it's your right to be cautious. Now, I'm not saying you're completely rejecting everything. You know, you're not rejecting it, but I think you are cautious. I think you are skeptical. And I think people really need to earn your trust. And I look at that King of Cups and, and I think you're kind of hard to win over. It's hard to win you over. It's hard to get your attention to a degree. But I feel like you're solid. I feel like you're solid. I feel like you are secure. And again, this really roots into that self-respect with the chariot card and making sure that you are capable of transcending circumstances that you got all meddled up in before. It is like a do-over, <laughs> definitely is. This month, October and November, it's like big do-over time. And what I love, love, love about the Ace of Swords is that sense of surety, like feeling incredibly sure that you know that you're doing what is right for you. There is an element of bravery and courage with the Ace of Swords too. And I think you're willing to put yourself in a scenario that is not so safe, but at least you know you have yourself, right? You know you have you. I just don't see you wanting to get entangled with someone that's giving you that funny feeling. Now that funny feeling might ease up and it might, you know, prove itself to be wrong but I would rather see Scorpio taking their time, being skeptical, making people, you know, kind of quote unquote prove. I don't know that I like that word, but kind of prove themselves to you. I would prefer that than you just taking everyone's word for it and saying, okay, you know, yeah, let's go, let's go for it. And just kind of like falling for something, you know, I'd rather see you take your time. Now the six of cups is not inherently bad or anything like that. In fact, it may actually end up being good, but I just want to see you being smart about it. Okay. I want to see you being smart about it. And I definitely want to see you taking your time. I want to see you not feeling pressured by the time frame that maybe someone else is trying to force you to adhere to. You take your time. You take the time you need. And as a fixed sign, you can take, you, you may really need a lot of time. Okay. Okay. Three of coins. The Empress. And the seven of swords. Okay, what I really love is the way Scorpio seems to be holding themselves accountability for the creations in their lives. And that you are not relying upon anyone else to do the heavy lifting for you. That's the thing with the chariot. King of Cups also very much holds himself accountable. And the Empress too, understanding her power, the Empress understands her power in the creation process. The Empress, abs the Empress, like the chariot, absolutely will not settle for anything less than 
they know that they deserve. And it's not about cockiness or arrogance or being like a little princess to be like, well, I deserve this. And I just, that's not like a bratty type of thing. All right. It's really coming from that inner divinity and understanding if someone gives you a reason to pause, that there's something there. <laughs> if someone is making you feel distrusting or skeptical, there's probably a reason why. And you don't want to just invite someone in in spite of that little red flag. Because I think it's kind of like a little mini red flag. I don't think it's a big giant red flag. It's just a little mini one, but it does feel important enough that you say, do I want to deal with this? Do I want to invite this in? In spite of how promising it may seem, because I look at that six of cups and it is a sweet card. There's a lot of goodness there. <laughs> and, you know, you may have to reject something that has a lot of potential simply because it's like, it's good, but it's not quite there, you know? And the, one of the things that you may also need to contend with with the Seven of Swords is once you make that decision, you may backtrack or have the tendency to want to backtrack. Because to me, I look at this and I see tons of confidence, tons and tons of confidence. And then boom, here's the Seven of Swords. And it's like that confidence just kind of goes out the window. Like, well, where does the confidence go? Well, the confidence may come from like, oh, did I make a big mistake? Should I give that person the benefit of the doubt? Should I try that opportunity? Maybe I wrote it off too soon. It comes from the not knowing. It comes from, you know, when you're at a crossroads, you know that that path goes this way and this path goes that way, but you don't ultimately know where it leads. You don't know the final destination necessarily. You have an idea of what you want, and this is an act of faith. Because if the two of wands is what you want and you're faced with a crossroads and you have to make choices now and you say, okay, well, I'm going to take this path and have faith that it's going to lead me where I want to go. And it's not a desperate hope. It is faith. But I think sometimes with faith, when we do things in faith, that faith can waver. And then it kind of goes, oscillates back and forth between faith and doubt. And we may have different phases of that. One minute we're faithful to the nth degree. And then the next minute we're like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe I was premature. Maybe I, you know, and we backtrack. And that's the seven of swords. But usually when the seven of swords comes up, there's really no need for it. That's just our little inner adversary adversary working against us, trying to keep us safe and secure, and that's it. It's not real. So we have to understand that those doubts truly are not real. And to kind of go back to those moments where we felt confident in our choices. Because I look at this three of coins and it tells me that you are building something really, really special. You're building a business, you're building a life, you're building a relationship, a marriage, whatever. You're building something really special. And there are certain people with whom you can build that. Right? There are certain opportunities that can help you build that. And there are certain opportunities that won't be of any help at all. And usually if we do something while we have skepticism, while we're having issues with trust, if we kind of go against that feeling and we try it anyway, usually that negative emotion can creep in and it can manifest in a way that we don't necessarily want. So if you want to wait for that skepticism and distrust to dissipate, you can, I think it will eventually, but for the sake of not manifesting your greatest fears, I would say, put that on hold. Let things take time, let things stretch out if you need to. Okay. Um, this is not a time now it kind of goes again. Now this is a, a 
a message that I'm not going to see with every sign. But for you, Scorpio, I do see this. Because some signs, I think it's okay to rush. I don't know that it's okay for Scorpio to rush. Okay, I think letting time stretch is probably going to be better. Um, I think you'll feel like you have more control. You'll have a little bit more of a say-so. And this doubt won't be as sub substantive when you get there. Okay. But um, ultimately, this is all rooted in how conscious you are within your heart. How conscious you are. And how willing are you to listen? Because it may feel completely counterintuitive. Completely. And it may feel like you are going against the grain. Or it's like, it's like rubbing something the wrong way, truly. And yet that's probably a good sign. That probably means you're doing something right. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pull out a bunch of clarifiers. I have a feeling this story is gonna get, get a little bit deeper. We're gonna pull out a ton of different clarifiers. We're gonna talk for another 25 to 30 minutes about all these cards. We do get really detailed in the comprehensive reading. So if you wanna join, the link for that is in the description box in the comment thread down below. Um, again, we talk for another 25 to 30 minutes or so. So if you wanna join me, you are more than welcome. All right. Let's take a look at the chariot card. What else does Scorpio need to know about this chariot here? Oh, another chariot. I love when that happens. Okay, a couple of aces. Beautiful. The lovers. Two of wands. A lot of major arcana already. I'm loving the Ace of Swords because it does not feel, uh, well, I just <laughs> I was just going to say it doesn't feel confused and then we kind of get this card, but for the most part, I don't know that you're going to be all that confused. All right, and for the King of, Col uh, sorry, King of Cups. Another two of wands. Yeah, I had a weird feeling about that six of cups. Definitely. Yeah, that's it working. Working out, I think, eventually. Okay, and for the three of coins, beautiful. We have the star, the sun. Nine of wands, four of swords, 10 of swords. Beautiful, okay. So this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So if you want to join, you're more than welcome. Thank you all so much. Have a great September, Scorpio, and I'll talk to you soon.